Barakata Yahawa, Barakata Yahawashai, Bahashom, Barakaha Kwadash, Barakatum. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, glory, and infinite honors to Yahawa, Bahashom, Yahawashai. Double honors to the apostles and elders, a great millstone who rule and teach well. In peace and salutations to your sincere Akiyam out there, pushing this word in truth and sincerity to the four corners of the globe. May you brothers endure until the end. This is the brother Raya with another video, and I'm going to start it off in Isaiah chapter 66, verse 15. For behold, Yahweh will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. And the Lord or Yahweh is the true name of the heavenly father whom the world ignorantly refers to as a so-called God. And as it says, Yahweh will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind. The chariots being the heavenly vehicles of the Most High, which the world ignorantly refers to as uh, so-called UFOs, flying saucers, UAPs, whatever you want to call them. And Yahweh, through his son, Yahweh Shai, whom the world ignorantly refers to as so-called Jesus, is coming with a fleet of chariots piloted by the angels to render the anger and fury of Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai upon the wicked people on this planet, chiefly the biblical Edomites or these so called white people who are currently con in control of the planet. And that fire is that concentrated heat or so called laser beams that the chariots are going to be firing. And it's also speaking of nuclear missiles, which are going to be getting shot to the ends of the earth uh, when Yahweh Shai makes a second coming, which also World War Three is going to be taking place at that time. And the spirit of the Most High through the chariots is going to be guiding those missiles to their targets so they reach them without any problems. And I opened up the video with this verse to preface a clip. From Yoram, ya servant of Yahawashai's Instagram page, where a pre or prep zone rise is going to go into how uh, so-called UFOs, really the chariots, were spotted over a Russian nuclear weapons base and took control of the launch cycle and put in the coordinates for those missiles to hit the U.S., and nothing happened at that point because it wasn't time for those missiles to be fired. But best believe that when the time comes during World War Three and Yahweh Shai's second coming, those missiles are going to be fired by the Russians. And uh, again, the spirit of the Most High through the chariots are going to be guiding those missiles to hit their main target, the United States of America, to render his uh, anger with fury and his rebukes with flames of fire. And this is a fair use copyright disclaimer. I do not own any of the footage in this clip, nor do I stand to gain from it monetarily. It is simply for educational purposes. This just in, a UFO flew over a Russian launch silo, entered the nuclear codes, and aimed at the U.S. Pull it up on the Jumbotron, Steve. At this program, very, very uh, intense program, sophisticated, where they were studying UFOs for years. Uh, he said there was uh, other evidence about the secret Russian program uh, that he received from former uh, Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid. They were very, very close for years in giving each other information. He says UFOs appeared over a Russian missile base. This was also interesting. Again, now in the congressional record, UFOs appeared over... This the is from Harry Reid. ...maneuvers and witnesses and then somehow took control of the launch system. The missiles aimed at the U.S. were suddenly fired up. Launch control codes were somehow entered and the base was unable to stop what could have been initiated yeah. World War III, then just as suddenly the UFOs disappeared and the launch control system shut down. I mean, if you're not concerned about national security with this issue, I mean, that, that pretty much sums it up right there. Um, you know, if, yeah. if that's all true, and again, you talk about George Mapp's uh, credibility. This man's a congressman, but he looks like he should be selling propane and propane accessories, but he's a congressman, I think. In the United States of America, you can research it. I can't recall the the name of it right Propane. now. Propane. That pretty boy ain't right. That the UFOs were sighted over a nuclear installation mm -hmm. and it was completely shut down. 
A. Biblical prophecy taking place right before our very eyes. And all this talk about UFOs in the news and a U.S. House panel just having the first ever public uh, discussion on UFOs and talks of Russia shooting nukes at the West in World War III is all not by coincidence. We are living in the last days, really the last seconds of the last days before the end of this current age of the rulership of the heathen nations, chiefly by the biblical Edomites and the second coming of Yahawashai to end this you know, rulership of Esau, Edoms, and these other heathens, and to save the elect of the nation of Israel, the nation of Israel consisting of you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, as well as the Israelite foreigners who look like these heathen nations, and begin establishing the kingdom of heaven, which is going to be an eternal kingdom of righteousness. And the, new, and the two main combatants during World War III is going to be the United States of America, which is biblically known as Babylon the Great, and Russia, which in the scriptures is known as uh, Gog in Ezekiel chapter 38, and the North Country in uh, Jeremiah chapter 50. But now let's get back into these precepts. This is Joel chapter 2. I'm going to read verses 1 to 8. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain, which is exactly what the Truman the Lord the prophets of the Most High, chiefly through GMS or Great Millstone are doing, as well as the brothers that come in the spirit of GMS, going out onto the highways and byways preaching this word, as well as putting up video epistles like this, letting everyone know exactly what times they're living in, the times of the end, the times of biblical prophecy, the times of the, the great and terrible day of Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of Yahweh cometh, for it is nigh at hand. A day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong. Speaking of those nuclear weapons, there hath not been ever the like, which is referring to how these nuclear weapons came about very recently, beginning with those two atomic bombs dropped on Nagasaki and Hiroshima back in 1945 during World War II. Neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations, because when those missiles are fired, every single nuclear missile is going to be fired. Not one will be left in a silo. And then after the dust settles, Yahawashai, with the 144,000 of the elect of the nation of Israel, who are fishers of men right now, prophesying out on the highways and byways, are going to be hunters in that day in spiritual bodies. Think about 144,000 supermen going and rounding up the surviving heathens, beginning with their elites and slapping chains on them so they can begin serving hardcore bondage and slavery, building up the kingdom of heaven for the first thousand years of the kingdom of heaven. And Yahawashai in the elect, and Abarak the Zion of that number, hey, they're never going to allow you heathens to build any weapons of war anymore. A fire devoureth before them. Speaking of that warhead at the front of the missile where the business takes place, and behind them a flame burneth, that rocket booster on the back of the missile. The land is as the Garden of Eden before them. The land looks normal. You've got cities, forests people, animals, life going on as you see it right now, with the majority of these people out here walking around like w without a care in the world, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yeah, and nothing shall escape them. When those nuclear missiles hit their targets, hey, those places are going to be turned into uh, you know, wastelands, like those post-apocalyptic movies or video games you see, Fallout, Mad Max, whatever comes to mind. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, and as horsemen, so shall they run. And in the scriptures, horses can be symbolic for power, and these missiles are a, a great power of destruction. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they leap. Like the noise of a flame of fire devoureth the stubble as a strong people set in battle array. 
And another reason they're being described as horses and horsemen and chariots is because what? Those are soldier, ancient soldiers and, and weapons of war. And when the prophets saw these visions thousands of years ago, they, they didn't know what a, a, a hypersonic missile was, a, a Satan II or anything like that, fat man or little boy. So they had to describe it the best way they could with what they knew during their times. Ancient weapons of war like bows and arrows, you know, spears, javelins, chariots, horsemen, et cetera, et cetera. And what do those missiles look like when they're flying through the sky like arrows before their face? The people shall be much pained. Hey, the people in an uproar, screaming and panicking and running around for safety when they hear those sirens going off to let them know that there's about to be a, uh, a nuclear hit and detonation. All faces shall gather blackness or ash or soot. People getting burned up by those nuclear missiles. Hey, one guy in the U.S. government just said recently that those UFOs, so-called chariots, were so advanced in their technology that they could turn people into charcoal briquettes. You know, those little charcoal pieces you put into the grill. And hey, the chariots are going to be turning people into charcoal, whether shooting those laser beams on them or controlling those nuclear missiles to hit those people and burn them to a crisp. <laughs> Sarah Connor style. Verse 7, they shall run like, and these are the main points I wanted to get to, they shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war and they shall march everyone on his ways and they shall not break their ranks. Everywhere those nuclear missiles are going to go, they're going to reach their targets without any problems. They're not going to break their ranks. They're going to be in order like a well-disciplined army. Neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk everyone in his path. Hey, because the spirit of Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai through the chariots is going to be controlling those nuclear missiles. And as we just saw in that clip, some UFOs, chariots showed up over a Russian nuclear weapon site, took control of the launch sequence and put in the coordinates to hit the United States of America. And when they shall fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. And that sword is speaking of those anti-missile defense systems, which the spirit of Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shah is going to be on those as well in that day to fail so that when those missiles fall upon them, they shall not be wounded. But now I'm going to go to Psalms chapter 58. I'm going to start at verse three and run around a bit. The wicked, which according to the scriptures, Malachi one verse four the border of wickedness in Job 9 verse 24, the wicked whom the earth has been given into the hands of is speaking of you Edomites because the blessing of Esau Edom's back in Genesis chapter 27 was what? The sword, which his ultimate sword are, are those nuclear missiles and his blessing was the fatness of the earth and the dew of heaven from above a to gain control of the planet for a little season through his great military might. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go, astray, they go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. And you Edomites do nothing but lie. Use deceit, guile, and trickery. Just look at your track record throughout history. You make treaties with people, and then you break those treaties and screw them over. Look at what happened with the, the so-called Native Americans or the Gadites, the Israelites of the northern kingdom. Or look at what or you make a, you're, you're allies with people for a season. And then when you're done with them, you turn around and stab them in the back. Look at Saddam Hussein. You were his ally back in the 80s during the Iran-Iraq war. But then when he wanted to move away from the U.S. dollar, what did you do? You labeled him a, a dictator and a, a sponsor of terrorism, and you went and completely destroyed the country of Iraq. Now I'm going to jump down to verse 6. Break their teeth, O power, in their mouth. Break out the great teeth of the young lions, O Yahweh. And teeth are what? A lion's main weapon. So this is talking about uh, the teeth or the weapons of the wicked being broken or failing. 
And uh, that's what I was talking. That's what I was uh, going into earlier back in that Joel chapter two, verse eight, where it says, when they shall fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. The spirit of the most high and through the chariots is going to be on those anti-missile defense systems and even some of uh, the U.S.'s uh, nuclear missiles to fail. So she's that much more defenseless when those nuclear missiles from Russia and these other nations that are going to shoot missiles onto her are going to be able to hit the U.S. without any problems. But at the same time, you know, America's going to get off a lot of her missiles as well to hit these other countries. And the spirit of the Most High is going to be on those missiles to hit those targets in other countries. Verse 7. Let them melt away as waters which run continually. Hey, melt away into nothing, getting burnt up by those uh, nukes. When he bendeth his bow to shoot his arrows, when he goes to shoot some of his nuclear missiles, let them be as cut to pieces, their teeth being broken out of their mouths, them not being allowed to fire some of their missiles or... Uh, or activate their anti-missile defense systems so they're that much more helpless in the face of those nuclear missiles hitting her, which 200 million nuclear missiles are going to hit the United States of America, turning it into the biblical lake of fire from sea to shining sea, and then a desolate, uninhabitable wasteland afterwards. And let's go to Revelation chapter 9, verse 12. And remember... The book of Revelation is the last book of the, of the so-called New Testament in the Bible. One woe or destruction is past. Speaking of World War I, and behold, there come two, two woes more hereafter. World War II, which is past, which saw the first ever use of nuclear weapons. And that third woe, World War III, which is quickly coming and will go nuclear as well. And like I said earlier in the video, the two main combatants are going to be the United States of America and Russia. Which who which countries were the main countries talked about in that clip I played a Russia with their nuclear weapons getting taken over by the chariots at their weapons facility and what the U.S. the chariots putting in those coordinates to hit the U.S., but this is uh, Jeremiah chapter 50, and I'm going uh, to start at verse 9. And the header reads, prophesy against Babylon. Like I said earlier, the United States of America is known as Babylon the Great in the Scriptures, that virgin daughter of Babylon, the mother of harlots, also in Revelation chapter 17. But you got to have discernment when reading this chapter, because at some points it's talking about the Neo-Babylonian Empire under King Nebuchadnezzar. And then at other points, that daughter of Babylon, the United States, which the verses I'll be going into is dealing with this modern day whore. This is verse nine. For lo, I will raise and cause to come up against Babylon, the United States, an assembly of great nations from the north country, Russia. Also, like I said earlier, Russia is known as the North Country in this verse, as well as uh, Gog in Ezekiel chapter 38. And the reason it's known as the North Country is because what's north of the U.S., that Arctic Ocean region, and then Russia. And over the last couple of years, Russia has been building up its military capabilities, nuclear capable in that Arctic Ocean region. And it's a well-known fact that Russia shooting missiles from itself across the north and from its assets in that Arctic Ocean region for those missiles to reach the U.S. would be the shortest trajectory time for those missiles to hit the U.S. And that assembly of great nations unto the North Country are not only Russia's allies like China, Iran, North Korea, but also the allies of the U.S. that are going to turn against her at some point during World War III and ally themselves with Russia to help in shooting those 200 million nuclear missiles onto uh, this whore. Read Revelation chapter 17, verse 16. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, the ten horns referring to the EU or European Union, beginning with the first ten common markets of the EU back when it was known as the European Economic Community upon the beast, the beast being NATO, these shall hate that whore that rides upon the beast, 
the United States of America and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire, nuclear fire. And they shall set themselves in array against her. From thence she shall be taken. Their arrows shall be as of a mighty expert man. None shall return in vain. A great people and a strong. There hath not been the like before, neither shall there be any more afterwards. Every single nuclear missile will be fired. But I'm going to jump down to verses, uh, verse 41 and then go around a bit. Behold, a people shall come from the north, north country Russia, and a great nation. And many kings shall be raised up from the coasts of the earth, from the ends of the earth, that assembly and nations unto the north country. They shall hold the bow and the lance. Again, those nuclear missiles. And what do bows shoot? Arrows. So those silos and other launch platforms for those missiles. They are cruel and will not shoot mercy. Their voice shall roar like the sea, and they shall ride upon horses. Everyone put in array like a man to the battle against thee, O daughter of Babylon. And when you go to Psalms 137, verses 7 to 8, you'll see that these Edomites are synonymous with the daughter of Babylon. But now I'm going to jump up to verse 40. As the Most High overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah and the neighbor cities thereof, and besides being known as Babylon the Great in the Scriptures, as pursuant to Revelation 11, verse 8, the United States of America is also known as spiritual Sodom and Egypt. And at this point, it should be very easy to see why the U.S. is known as spiritual Sodom. This is the main country that pushes that alphabet death style onto the rest of the planet. Saith Yahweh, so shall no man abide there, neither shall any son of man dwell therein. When those nuclear missiles hit this place and turn it into the biblical lake of fire, after the dust settles, it's going to be a desolate, uninhabitable wasteland where man, woman, or child will never set foot on ever again. And after a time, only harsh desert creatures are going to dwell here. Therefore, the wild beasts of the desert with the wild beasts of the islands shall dwell there, and the owls shall dwell therein, and it shall be no more inhabited forever. Neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation. And when everything's said and done, the former United States of America, hey, that used up whore, Babylon, is going to stand as an eternal memorial as to what a wicked kingdom looked like, how not to govern the earth, and ultimately what the judgment and punishment was for afflicting the apple of the Most High's eye, the children of Israel, again known as you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. So that's it with this video. And with this video, I hope you sincere Akiam and Akwath were edified. Just keep strong. We are almost out of this final wicked captivity of the heathen nations, chiefly of the Edomites, primarily from Babylon, the United States. And as always, I'm going to say, Abad Babol, Kwam Yasharala, and until next time, Shalom.